it is a, a wonderful day to be alive. Let me try that again. It's a wonderful day to be alive and to know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, to know that you're forgiven, to know that you're part of the beloved and you're adopted. Uh, it is great to be a part of the family of God. This message this morning is on, as you can imagine, in the times that we're living in, is an imperative message. It's a very urgent message. It's a very timely message, I believe, for our nation and for the world. If you have been sleeping upside in a post hole lately, then you're totally ignorant of what's happening around the world. But if you've got any brain and eyes to see and ears to hear, you know these are not good times. But these are the times that the Bible predicted, that the prophets prophesied, that Jesus declared and decreed that it would be a part of humanity. It would be our lot, our generation, that would have to face these things. And though we don't appreciate them in the arena of embracing them with joy, we nonetheless must embrace them and must say that this is my time to be alive and this is my time to do what God has called me to do because God chose me and you for this generation. If he wanted somebody else, he would have picked somebody else. You would have been born at another time. Even though I wanted to be born during the wild, wild west, I thought that would have been really cool <laughs> for various reasons. Uh, that wasn't my lot. It is to be here at this time. So this message is a very powerful message, prophetic message, but it's a very stern warning. And I want to say this at the beginning as we are starting to record because, again, live stream and YouTube is different and media platforms only get certain aspects of uh, the, the statements that I make. But I want to remind this congregation, those that are watching, listening right now, those on WHR and other places, that over in 2012, the Lord spoke to me and said that when Israel strikes Iran, I will shut off the financial valve to America. He also said to me that there would be great persecution for not only the Jews, but for the church in the coming days after because of the blame that will be for your loss of luxury and comfort and the tanking, if you will, of the economy. It will be blamed on the Jews, and it will be blamed on the church who supports Israel and the Jews themselves. I bring this out because we're at the precipice of that. If it hasn't already happened at the time of this recording, Israel will strike Iran, and you will see the financial deterioration of America accelerate. Now, in that particular word, I don't know if shutting off the valve is quick is it a slow churning of the knob, if you will? I don't know, but I do know this. The life that we know will no longer exist here in America because of our sin. And you better take that to the bank and believe the word of the Lord. It's going to happen. It's already happening before your very eyes. So I have to reiterate it today in front of a larger audience to bring us back to remembrance and to shake us with urgency that tomorrow is not going to be the same as today and that you with much expediency and urgency and importance in your life need to prepare and prepare accordingly to life changing. Now, what does that mean for a believer? That just means taking another notch, if you will, in the gospel belt of faith and saying, Lord, I stand with you no matter what. No matter how hard it gets, no matter what I lose in life, I know my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I know I have an answer to those that are going to undoubtedly lose their life in the coming days, and that I will share with you some more. So I wanted to bring that back out to you to remind you. Some don't need to be reminded, but some are new and have never heard that before, but it's coming. The financial valve of America will be shut off in the coming days. We are ever so close to this.
Here's what the Lord spoke to me in my time in prayer. He said, America, America, the pride of the nations, the whore who sits on many waters, high and lifted up by self-gratifying achievements. You drink the cup that is filled with the blood of the nations, but you are soon to drink from the dregs of my indignation. You are meddling in the business and affairs of ancient conflicts. You seek to resolve these conflicts for your gain, deceitfully baiting the nations to fall into your trap. But I tell you this day, listen to these words, I tell you this day that your end is coming. The end game has come. Your days of bullying and betrayal are ending. The dismantling of your nation has begun. Your enemies have prepared to inherit their portion of your birthright, of which you foolishly traded for the lust of more. America, your end has arrived. The way of life that you knew will no longer be known. You are like a vessel fitted for destruction, and you will know the pain that you've caused the nations by your wicked rule. Listen to this. My church, awaken from your slumber. Put away the drunkenness of mind. For what is coming on the earth, only the sober will survive. Heavenly Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Help me to articulate this message, Father, in the way, in the form and fashion in which you delivered it to me. Father, may we have ears to hear and a heart to receive, and may we respond with faith and never in fear. In Jesus' name, everybody everywhere said amen. Look at your neighbor and say good morning. Just strap in and hang on. Give the man an hour and he'll get out of your way and leave you alone. But the title of this message, the Lord spoke to me and he called it The American Apocalypse. The American Apocalypse. As we know, that word means an end, a revealing of an end, or destruction, or finality. Anytime you hear that word spoken, it gives shivers down the spines of people who don't understand it. To me, it doesn't give me fear. It gives me faith and great hope because I know in the book of Revelation, which is the revelation and the revealing of Jesus Christ. I have great hope knowing that one day he's going to set everything straight. And the only way to set everything straight is to fix it. And sometimes fixing hurts. Is anybody here, you ever been to a chiropractor? It's funny to me, they can break, it seems like they break every single bone or snap bones or whatever they do. And how do you feel? Great. And we are for an alignment in our nation and an alignment in the world. But I welcome it in the sense of the joy that it would all end one day in glory. And the King of kings and the Lord of lords will be with us and we will be with him forever. So the American apocalypse. So me to Jeremiah chapter 21. I want you to go there today, Jeremiah chapter 21. We are living in very dangerous times as you have looked at the headlines. It has been right along the track of prophetic reality of what the watchmen have been telling you and warning you here in America, not the Pop-Tart preachers, skinny jean preachers of modern cultured churches, but those that love God and are seeking his face. You know, those that eat locusts and wild honey and are wearing camel skins and they're out in the desert and the wilderness and don't have the fanciest and the finest of all, wasn't born with a silver spoon, but love Jesus. Those kind of people I like. I like those who turn the world upside down. I like the apostles. I like the disciples, those that walked with Jesus. He didn't pick the best and the brightest. Did you know that? He picked those who were available. And I'm thanking God every day for that. And so Jeremiah chapter 21, the backdrop is in Jeremiah chapter 20, we have him warning Judah again. Every time we go to Jeremiah, he's warning somebody. Uh, he didn't seem to be a very popular preacher. When you warn people, you're not popular, and that's the way it should be. 
Let me try that again. If you are looking to be popular as a preacher, you're in the wrong business. You're doing something wrong. I said you're doing something wrong if you're not preaching a message that is challenging because the truth will always offend you. Uh, so let me try that again. The truth will always offend you. There's always that roadblock into your life of your commonality and your normality and the, the things you want to do in life. That, that truth just is an inconvenient issue, isn't it? And we're the kind of people that we don't like our dreams to be ruffled and messed up and have life reshuffled. But how many of y'all know when you're a believer, your dreams are locked in to the destiny of God? Whatever the will of God is, that's the will for your life. Though he gives you individual dreams, he guides your steps. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not towards your own understanding, but all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And I would rather choose his path. I've done my own before, and I've gotten messed up. So he's speaking to them in Jeremiah chapter 20, and he's leading up to 21. But in 20, he finds himself in a position that is not too good, if you will, as a preacher. You say, what is it? Well, he was arrested, and they beat him 40 different stripes, if you will, on his feet. And then they bent him over in a stock and put him in jail. Now, for you wannna-be YouTube preachers and wannna-be prophets and prophetess and witches and warlocks, let's do that to you and see how much longer you wanna be on channels you won't I promise you people that want to be true prophets they're, they're make-believe prophets they're not prophets or prophetess they're liars because whenever the wolves come they run with the pack because they're wolves too in sheep's clothing but when danger comes a true shepherd will stand there with his staff and knock some heads in are you with me and Jeremiah was this kind of man and so we begin with him being persecuted. Persecuted for what? The preaching of the gospel. The preaching of warning to a backslidden, debauchery-filled, idolatry-filled nation, much like America. So fast forward to Jeremiah chapter 21. Imagine this. He's still preaching after all that. I, I, most folks, they bail out of church where they get hurt one time because the preacher don't shake their hand. Or somebody takes their parking spot or somebody takes their chair. Come on, somebody. True persecution will make you persevere, will make you press in if you're really a man or woman of God. Verse 1, the word which came unto Jeremiah from the bishop. No, from the headquarters, from Tennessee, from the Assemblies of God, from the Church of God, Church of God in Christ, Church of God we need Christ. Is anybody with me? The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord. That's what we need today in America is a word from God. We need a word from God. We, we need a word that is real, a word that shakes us to our very core, a word that matches what's happening outside the world and what's happening prophetically. We need a word from Jesus. We need to have our pastors that are energized and Holy Ghost baptized in fire that hear from God and let us know what the deal is instead of lying to us and misleading us and raping us and fleecing us and taking from us. And one of the greatest things that they do and the greatest commodities that they take from us is our time because you can't get back tomorrow. I said, you can't add to tomorrow. It's too late. And I would rather be serving Christ and his kingdom, seeing souls saved and lives changed, than to spend my time in a church, in a mortuary, with Pastor Jack Frost, a six-foot icicle. Thank God I'm only 5'11 11 and a half. Is anybody with me? At least Uncle Sam said that. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord... When King Zedekiah sent unto him Pashur the son of Melchiah and Zephaniah the son of Maziah the priest. Now notice this, it was the king who sent an assembly to the man of God because the king couldn't do it himself. 
We're living in a day today within the church that we want everybody else to pray for us. We want everybody else to represent us to God. We want everybody else to confess for us. We want everybody else to go before the throne when we're the ones supposed to go to an almighty God. I thank God for church. I thank God that we can get together and be in assembly together and to worship him in a tabernacle of praise. I thank God for that. But you're the one that's responsible to go to God, not me. I said, you're the one responsible. I'm not your priest. Is anybody here today? If I am, I'm not charging enough. Come on, somebody. Confession will be at 2 today after lunch. Are you with me? Tickets only, please. Well, we live in a society today of microwave church. We want the pastor to push the button to get the answer or the slot machine of heaven to pull God's arm and see what he does for you. When it is your responsibility to go before an almighty God and say, God, I plead with you to understand what is happening. I plead to understand your word. I, I want to know. Let me see. Let me hear. Let me experience you. Let me feel the fathomless depths of your glory. Let me feel the mighty waves of your presence. Let me feel the fiery embers of your glory, God. I want to know you. I want to know what it feels like, Lord, to hear your voice. I don't want to hear the testimonies of preachers and testimonies of the saints of the past. I want to know what it's like to walk and talk with a living God. Breathe on me, O oh Father. Breathe on me and pass me not by. But, O oh God, here I am. My hands are stretched out unto you without fear, without wrath, without doubting. O oh God, I need you today. No, we don't have that type of church today. We want everybody else to do it. We think coming into the house of God and giving him a tip and walking in and giving a little bit of our time is enough, but it ain't enough. You got to spend your whole life with God. I said, you got to walk with him. you got to talk with him down the life's lanes of life, the joy that's full and full of glory. And you can't do that holding your preacher's hand. you got to do it yourself. I've got to do it myself. And this king couldn't do it. This king could not do it. He could not even go to the man of God. He said, I want you guys to go. I'm going to send you the priest. Watch what he says in verse 2. Inquire. I need you to inquire. I need you to go ask the preacher. I need you to go ask the church. I need you to go ask the bishop. I need you to go ask the overseer. I need you to go, go, go and find out for me. And I pray thee that the Lord for us, notice this, he wanted him to pray. He wanted the man of God to pray to get him out of the trouble. And I'm going to tell you something, America, you're going to be looking to preachers to pray you out of this trouble, and it ain't going to help you. Ajax is not going to help you. Clorox won't help you. OxyClean ain't going to help you because an almighty God has an issue and an indictment with America and the nations of the world. But we think that we can just go and pay some type of penance to God and God is going to forgive us and it's over with. No, America is at the point of no return. Individually, we are forgiven if we go to him, but as a nation, it is too late. So they want you to pray, man of God. I want you to go pray for the trouble. I've had people contact me and say, I want you to pray for America when we get out of this situation. I'm not praying for you, America. I've already prayed for you. And I've been told to quit praying. God told Jeremiah, quit praying. God told Jeremiah, if I sent Moses and Samuel, two of the greatest heroes of Israel, to Israel, they would not respond to repentance. Are you listening to me? The eclipse was a sign that leads to the events. The eclipse was not an event in the sense of that was the end of everything. It was the beginning of an, a demonstration from God to tell us this is what's coming, and all hell has broken loose since that day, and it will even more as we go. And we told you so. God told us so. The sign of Jonah. If you followed somebody else thinking that the sky was going to fall and everybody was going to go into a ditch that day, well, I'm sorry, you didn't listen. And that's what makes Christians foolish many times because we're predictive in our nature 
and we think God's going to do this or do that. God is a God of mercy. He gave Nineveh time to repent, and we're in that time frame, but we're not repenting, and we won't repent. Are you here today? And I've preached this for a long time before these signs ever came. And people would get mad, they'd get angry and say, well, you're doom and gloom and you give no hope. No, I have plenty of hope, honey. But I got realization here. I got reality that if God said he has put judgment upon a nation, you ain't going to do anything to change that, especially at the point of no return. You can't kill the babies like we do. You can't change our children's sex and turn them into little Frankensteins and little monsters and all these things. You can't do that and think God's going to smile down upon America. Your local pastor, your skinny jean pastor might think so, but that ain't what the Word says. Our God's a holy God. And it's about time sovereignty came back. Holiness came back to the church of God. Holiness is not what you wear, honey. Holiness is inside of your heart. Holiness is a person. His name is Jesus. It's the Holy Ghost. It's conviction. Say, I ain't going to talk that way. I'm not going to walk that way. I'm not going to think that way. I'm not going to look that way. I'm not going to join up with the world. I'm going to get as far away from the world as I possibly can. Sometimes you can't tell the difference between the church and the world. Some churches you can't tell the difference between a club and a worship service. Somebody help me. I'm feeling good this morning, by the way. Beautiful sunshine out there. It's going to be 82, I think, today. Isn't that beautiful? Just in time for the wasps to start flying around. And choir, I pray thee of the Lord for us. You go there and pray. You pray us out of this trouble, Pastor. You pray that we can get back to cable television and satellite dishes and, 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 and iPads and iPods and come on, somebody. Uh, all these, uh, you pray that, 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 that we stay in our luxury and, and we still have Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks. Honey, I'm going to tell you something right now. What America needs is a fasting. What America needs is some of these things to be taken from us to where we go back to the realization of who God is. And I know it don't set well with you, but I'm going to tell you it's the truth. We're overloaded. We're a beast, if you will, not just physically. We're a beast in our, our, our lust and our flesh for life. We've lost the reason why we're born again. We've lost it. We sold covenant reasons and exchanged it for the American dream. And honey, God's going to mess that dream up. It's already happening. You don't know how close we are. We are so close for life changing forever for this nation. If you don't like paying $3 a gallon now, you're not going to like to pay 5 8 and 10 You're not going to like when you can't even get gas. It's coming, folks. It's coming. And I know the atmosphere is not conducive to hear these things, but I'm telling you it's the reality, and that's what the prophetic does. It breaks through that normalcy bias and that resistance that I feel, and I love when I feel resistance preaching because I know it's exactly the word of the Lord. Are you here today? It's not just in this room. I can feel it from outside this room. I know folks don't want to hear it, but it's a reality that is coming to us, and it's coming to us faster than you realize and recognize. And you that are resisting this right now are the ones that are going to be hit the hardest. Are you here today? I'm feeling good. Because I'm going to tell you something. For me, it don't make no difference. My life is default. I said my life is default. I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not Charles Bronson. I don't have a death wish. I don't desire for any calamity. I don't desire for chaos. I don't thrive in that. But I'll tell you right now, if it comes my way, I will deal with it. If it comes my way, and that's a lot in life, and God says, you're strong enough to go through that fire, then, honey, we're going through that fire. Because one thing's for sure, if I do it and do it through faith and do it with God, I'm going to get on the other side. See, we got tenacity. We have to have tenacity again in the body of Christ. Bulldog tenacity. We've lost it. We've lost it. Why? We're too soft. I said we're too soft. But we are definitely too soft in America. So you pray. Pray for what? For Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, maketh war against us, if so, that the Lord will deal with us according to his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. So Zedekiah, he couldn't go himself to talk to God 
So he goes and takes his entourage, his assembly, his ambassadors, and they go, they find the prophet, the one they just beat. The one in chapter 20 where they smacked him in the face. Hit him 40 times at the feet and put him in the stocks. That same guy. They knew he had the word from God. But they wanted him to pray to God and say, speak on our behalf. Why? Because I, I don't want to go to war. I don't want to deal with what's coming my way. Listen to what he was doing. Zedekiah did not want the will of God. Jeremiah had been telling him the will of God. This is what gets me with modern-day preachers. We prophesy, we tell what the Word says, the Word tells what it says, and it's of truth, it's reality. You're watching it in the live stream, if you will, of life, the reality of life, and we want to deny it and say, no, it can't happen. I promise you right now, you have people that are ready to fly, fly away. This isn't happening. We're in the, this is not happening. This is just... A, and you're watching Bible prophecy. Do you understand what's happening in Israel? Do you understand what's happening in the Middle East? Do you understand that the Russians have sent a supersonic a cruise a boat? Over? I mean, everybody's getting ready to fight. And we've been fighting. We've been in World War III. Are you listening? But we're so comatose in America, and we're being lied to so we can continue to slide the card, continue to get in debt, continue to buy that car that's probably going to break down, especially if it's electric, and buy into the propaganda, the corporation. America is a corporation. It's no longer a vision. It's no longer a dream. It's no longer a place of the land of the, the free, the home of the brave. It is a corporation. It's one big commercial. And I'm going to tell you right now, the world is tired of our commercialization. They're tired of the church's commercialization. They want reality. They want to feed their babies. They want to take care of their children. They don't want to die in an air raid. They don't want to be vaccinated, terminated, suicided. They want to be able to live. They don't want their babies cut up like some type of Frankenstein experiment. Look at the world. The world doesn't want this import anymore of what we're given. They're tired of our exporting, importing of what we're giving them. That's why we're at the precipice of what we are around the world. They're tired of it. They're tired of the tyranny. They're tired of all the backdoor uh, uh, d deals that are made that you and I have no idea of. Yeah. Using money and using the SWIFT system and using the Federal Reserve and using all these different instruments of war to control mankind. America's a wicked, nasty nation. You better believe it. Nah, that didn't go over good. That was a lead balloon. I love it. I'm going to hit that thing right out the park, baby. I'm going to ride this pony. Huh? Feels good to ride it. Let's ride this thing because it's the truth. Because in our mind, we say, no, we're good. We're fine. We're good. We, we wipe off the lust of our faith. We wipe off the grime and the sin of our faith. And we, faith, and we say, we're fine. Honey, we're not fine. We're wretched. We're miserable. We're naked. We're mystery Babylon. We're a stench in the nostrils of God. Our pastors are sleeping with everything that walks in the door. Come on, somebody. We are living in whoredoms in our country. You can't even watch television without something that is either LGBT barbecue. Come on, somebody. Or off-colored. Or make fun of the preacher. Or make fun of the Christian. Something somewhere. It's always a debauchery. But people resist it. They say, no, no, we're, we're still a God-fearing country. You don't fear God. We don't fear God. We don't fear God in the house of God. The house of God doesn't fear God. We're not afraid of him. We have no reverence towards God. We treat the house of God like we want to, like a clubhouse. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is what most churches are with Pastor Doofy up front. Are you here? You know it's the truth. But I want you to go there, and I want you to talk to this, this man of God. I know he's a man of God, but I want you to go to him, and I want you to pray. Pray that we don't go through what is appointed to us. I want you to know something, American, those that are watching, listening right now, you're supposed to go through this. You're supposed to go through famine. Now you don't like me. You're supposed to go through pestilence. You're supposed to go through hell and high water. 
You're supposed to go through the fire and the flood. You're supposed to go through the cross. You're supposed to go through the tomb. You're supposed to go through the grave. You're supposed to. That's what a believer does. Onward, Christian soldier. Are you listening to me? A Christian soldier is not one that parades in his finest dress, his lives Claiborne, or whatever you wear. A soldier is the one that goes into the mud, into the grime, into the trenches, and fights the good fight of faith, who prays on their knees and crawls out to an almighty God and spends time with the commander-in-chief, knows their weaponry, puts on the whole armor of God, knows how to do battle in prayer, intercessory prayer, who knows how to fast and do without and be content and be happy and be joyful, knowing that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life better than any country club in America including Margo, Logo, Poco, Mogo, whatever. They wouldn't let me in. Number one, I couldn't afford it. Number two, I couldn't say it, Brother Mark. Marco Polo. Nope, that's not the password. Anybody here, I don't fit those things. Never have, never will. I've tried it. It doesn't work for me. Pray that we don't go through this. But I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to be very plain with you. You are practicing witchcraft if you're praying that these things do not come upon the face of the earth. Let me try that one more time. You're praying witchcraft when you pray that these things do not come upon the face of the earth. You say, how is that witchcraft? Because Jesus said it would happen. I've taught you before when you pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, thy will be done, thy kingdom come. Is anybody here? How does that kingdom get here? Through violence. Since the days of John the Baptist, it's through violence. How does it wrap up the book of Revelation? Through violence, through destruction, through judgment, through the loss of humanity. God wraps this thing up. So for you to pray opposite of that is to pray against Jesus, to pray against the will of God. It is witchcraft. I'm preaching better than you're saying Amen. Because that's the most selfish thing for you and I to do is say, oh, God, just let it go away. Make the world go away. Come on, help me now. Put your head on my shoulder. Now, that's the church. Kumbaya, kumbaya, yeah. And that's what we want. We want all just to go away. Why can't we just have church like we used to? Where we gossiped and stuff. No, now we got to go in. It's serious. Every time I go in that church, he's so serious. Because your life depends upon it, honey. The book of Revelation, I've said it again and again, is a book of depopulation. There are going to be multiplied billions of people that will die. I don't believe you. Well, don't believe the Bible. Continue to pray against the will of God and practice witchcraft and see that your prayers don't get answered by an almighty God. But you pray according to the will of God, and the will of God is to finish this thing up. You're at the point of no return. Now, you can ask for mercy in the midst of judgment. You ask for lenience and all those different things. You say, God, hey, you know, I, I pray for the innocent ones. Of course you do. You pray for protection. But if you're trying to pray God's hands off of what he's trying to deal with, it ain't going to work. When we all come to that agreement and understanding the church can function properly and our last day's mission. What is the last day's mission? The assignment is souls. Rescuing people. Blessing people. Clothing the naked. Feeding the hungry. Blessing the widows. Taking care of the weak, the elderly. My God, who's going to take care of the elderly in these coming days of chaos? How many families will send them out to their death? How many will? They do it right now when they put them in their home. And I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not beating anybody up. I understand there's life and there's reasons. I get it. But I am talking about a population who doesn't even care about the infants. How are they going to care for the elderly? They don't care about what's in the womb. How are they going to care what's outside the womb? You understand? So I want you to pray that he's trying to make war with us. Yes, he is. And you know what? God anointed him. I said God anointed him. 
Let me just say this in passing. You don't worry about what's going to happen in Israel. God's got Israel. That, that, that's all there is to it. He reassured that to me this morning in, in, in Scripture. You, 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 know, you ain't got to worry about that. What you need to worry about is the repercussions of Jerusalem being that trembling cup. You need to worry about everybody else that tries to touch it and everything else that goes on. That isn't give them a pass. A, don't even write to me about that stuff. What I am telling you is God's got that under control because Jerusalem is still and will always be the centerpiece of prophetic realities. It is where the king is coming. He's not coming back to Manhattan. He's surely not coming downtown Livonia. And Anderson, I don't think so either. It's Jerusalem. It will be there. Are you listening? It will be there. But woe to everybody else. Woe to those that are around it in the coming days. Folks, that's the word of the Lord. That's Bible. That isn't something political. That's Bible. Watch this now. The Lord deal with us according to all his wonders. Do what you did before, God. Jeremiah, I want you to go, and I want you to go talk to God about the vapors of our self-righteousness of what we used to be. That's what most preachers today are preaching is the very vapors of what we used to be, riding on the backs of the morality of our forefathers when we're living like devils today and think God's going to bless us for what our forefathers did while we lie, come on now, in whoredoms and thinking God's going to wink at that because of what Papa did and Grandpa did and so on and so forth. You're sadly mistaken. Every generation has a judgment time. Every generation has a time, an appointed time with God and must give an account for themselves. Every individual will give an account for themselves. And we're at that point to where God is saying, you have an appointment with me. I want to talk with you. I have an indictment against you, America. Verse 3. Notice this. Here's Jeremiah's response under the Holy Ghost. Then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall you say to Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands. Watch this now. Zedekiah wanted to use his weaponry to fight against the will of God. What's the will of God was Nebuchadnezzar to come in, the Chaldeans, and to bring them into Babylon. But he wanted to resist that, just like our modern preachers today want to resist what God is prophesying and declaring would be our demise. What is our handicap that is coming in order to bring us back down to size? And you're praying against it. And there are many listening to me watching right now. You've been praying in agreement with those, and you pray amiss. You pray the will of God be done. No matter what it is, no matter how hard it is, you pray the will of God to be done because that's what I want. I'm not going to be in opposition with God. I said, I'm not going to be in opposition with God. How dare we challenge God and say, what are you doing? Just like the potter and the clay. Does the clay look up at the potter and say, what are you doing? Hey, hey, I don't want to look like that. I don't want to look like this. Yeah, we do that. That's exactly what the church does. But I'm going to take those weapons of war therewith. They fight against the kings of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without the walls, and I will assemble them in the midst of the city. So in other words, whatever you're trying to do to combat the will of God, God's going to use that against you for his will. So as you watch America, what we're doing, we're failing in Ukraine. We've lost the war in Ukraine. It's a matter of days, if not weeks, that that whole nation will be turned over to NATO, which is just turning it over to Uncle Sam. Are you listening? It's just a matter of time before Vladimir Putin nukes America, and he will nuke America and other entities connected to that regime. That's prophecy. And do you know something? That is the will of God. 
And I'm not going to be very popular today by people who say that's not the will of God. It is the will of God because that's the only way America can get to its knees. That's the only way people are going to come to salvation is when they finally see that you're dealing with an almighty, sovereign God because the church doesn't get it because the church wants to fight Republican, Democrat. We're still fighting. We're still going back and forth all the way to the election if there is one all this we're just going back and forth and when i hear people do that i say you missed it you've totally missed it it is not left it is not right it's all about god every portion of politics has its issues has its reasons it has its prodding it has its positions but god is god and he's sovereign and he has a plan for humanity and it's been written and it will come to pass according to what he wrote and what he spoke to the t baby it might not be on your time frame, but it's coming, and it's accelerating. I heard that the other yesterday of the acceleration when all this began. I just felt that so strong in my spirit, acceleration. I don't know about you, but I didn't sleep good last night. I said, I didn't sleep good last night. I don't think this is joyful. I don't find it gleeful, even though I know what is told to me and what I can see in certain parts of the future in part. That doesn't make it any better. But what makes it better is I will obey. I will obey. If this is my lot, if this is my time, if this is my generation, if I am a part of the end time generation that will see the manifestation of the glory of God and the judgment of God, then so be it. Let's do this thing. I'm not a coward. And you better not be a coward either because those are the ones that are outside the kingdom. You ought to read the book of Revelation with the dogs. Remember that message? No dogs allowed. You ought to go back and listen to that one. No dogs allowed, baby. Watch this. Would you besiege the walls without the walls? And I will assemble them into the midst of this city. In other words, I'm going to use these weapons. In other words, what you're trying to defend. Again, I mentioned Ukraine and what we're doing over in Israel, what we're going to do against Iran, all these different things and, and, and just different places of the, of the earth that we're involved in. All of that is going to turn to our negativity. It will turn to our destruction because you cannot go out and say you're just and you're righteous and do what we do and say God is with you and not receive the recompense of your reward of being a hypocritical nation. God doesn't take fancy to that. He doesn't like hypocrites. He deals with them. In America, God's going to deal with us. Verse 5, And I myself, who? I myself, who is this? God. And I myself will fight against you. You understand this? This is God speaking to the prophet. I'm going to fight against you. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to print more money. No, you're not. He's going to unplug the machine. You're going to run out of ink. Well, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. No, you're not. Well, we're, we're just going to bomb this. No, you're not. We don't even have supersonic missiles. We don't, we don't even have what Russia and China has in their arsenal. Kim Jong-un has some more deadly weaponry than we do. You're not in here today. Some of this is too, too high, too, too much for people because you don't study and research. But it's out there. Open source information. Its intelligence is there. Just read. But no, no, we got propaganda. We're pumped up. We're all this. You know, it's like that, like that guy who's, you know, he's full of steroids. He's real big and strong. And then somebody like Butterbean knocks him out. How many of y'all know who Butterbean is? That's a chubby old boxer. But he will knock your head off. Are you here today? Oh, Butterbean, what a name. Parents either didn't like him or it's got to be his nickname. Huh? Yeah, come in here studding out, man, and then some little f fat dude knocks you down. How stupid you look. That's America. That's the trouble we're in. We're all bulked out. We all look, you know, we're cut, man. We're fit. We're all this in the bag of chips. We're GQ. Some little nation knock you off your feet. You say, well, I don't know about that. Well, how come the Hutus are giving us such havoc over in Yemen? They just throwing bottle rockets. The Houthis, Hutus, I don't care what you call them. 
Are you here? That, that they're, they're just Bedouins. They're shepherds. And they're, they're and see, you try to tell people, that, you know, multi-million, million, million dollar aircraft carriers or, or, or whatever boats and machinery whatever, and stopping in its tracks and, 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 and spending, you know, $50,000 on a missile and we're spending a, a, a million dollars on a missile. It's David and Goliath, but in the opposite way. See, we think we're bigger than we really are, and God is going to bring us down to size, and our fatal mistake is to mess in the Middle East. Our fatal mistake is to mess with a nuclear power like Russia. Our fatal mistake is to mess with China. You say you sound like you're pro all these other nations. I am not pro anybody. I'm pro kingdom. I am a political atheist. I have an allergic reaction, severe allergic reaction to politics and politicians. I'm not allowed to be around them. Or I break out in hives. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't care because they all lie. They're like most preachers. They lie. Verse 5, I need to move because fangs are coming out, and I'm going to get hurt up here. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand. Don't have time to go into what that means. That means with his strength. He's going he to lift up that sleeve, and he's going to put that fist out, and you're going to see that forearm. And I will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. Listen, folks, do you think we can do what we do by maiming children and killing children and killing families in war and it not come home to us and kill the baby in the womb? and take the innocency of gender and all that we're doing and filling our children with debaucheries at the youngest of age when they don't know what they want to eat for breakfast, we're putting a condom on a banana and teaching them and more worried about their sexuality rather than math. While the other nations of the world are teaching their children armor, weaponry, survival, how to fight, dignity, morality. We are a cesspool in America. And my teachers that are with me that listen to the part of this family, they are throwing a shoe at the computer right now because they know it's the truth. They're at their wits' end. Many are leaving these demonic institutions because there's nothing they can do. Are you here? And God is going to bless America. This is the American apocalypse. This is the end of the American dream. This is the end of the American empire. This is the end of the American life that you used to live. And I'm trying to warn you as a believer to prepare yourself, to get yourself in order, to prepare your life for change. You say, Pastor, give me the ABCs and the one, two, threes. I cannot. You have to go before God, lay before him, prostate, prostate, and just say, God, here I am. I'm laying before you in my face. I'm laying before you in humility. I'm laying before you, Father, and saying, what must I do to get my house in order? Oh, I can tell you to get beans, and I can tell you to go get Bibles, but that ain't enough, honey. You need to know how to prepare yourself for what is coming. You think this is just a passing moment and we're going to get through this. Oh, by the way, we're going to get the right person in power. Man, it's going to change. Aren't you glad? Are you with me? You need to put down the pipe and quit smoking that stuff because it ain't helping your brain. You're losing brain cells as we speak. <laughs> Come on, honey. We're fixing to hit reality. I said, we're fixing to hit reality. And I don't want to see anybody in this house. I don't want to know anybody in my life that becomes shipwrecked because you listen to some fool on YouTube. 
You listen to some fool down the road in some church who told you it's going to be all right. We're going to fly out of here. We're going to be gone in the twinkling of an eye. No, you're not. Because all their predictions haven't worked yet. These witches and warlocks that get on there and tell you, well, the rapture's going to happen on the day of the eclipse. You still here, honey? Yep. I bet people believe in it. Well, let me, I just, hold on, I got to recalculate. No, I'm in April 22nd on Passover. Watch and see. And be in a, just pick a, pick a day, Groundhog Day. Are you listening to me? It will not happen until it happens according to the word of God in due season, and it's been written. Follow the word, not some weirdo that has an agenda. You think I'm crazy? Uh, uh, people send me videos, and I'm like, do what? I want to personally go to their house. And, you know, just, just minister to them. Are you listening? You say, you say, why do you feel that way? Because I'm tired of the church being pushed around. I'm tired of the church getting out of focus. I'm tired of the church not paying attention to what we need to do. Get with the program. Get with the prophetic program. Because when you do, life will be so much easier. When I came to terms, and let me tell you something, it was hard. It was hard to go and get in terms with God concerning what was happening to my nation. I've served my, my nation in the military, as many of those are watching right now, and we love you and appreciate our veterans. And it's hard it's for veterans to look at the country and watch it go into decay. It's hard. But when I came to terms and I cried my last tear, I recognized and realized, Lord, it's not my will. It's not what I want. I want your will to be done. And if this is what we have to do, then this is what we have to do as a people. This is what we have to face. Let's do this thing. Again, march on, Christian soldier. And so he says, I'm going to do this thing, verse 6, and I will smite the inhabitants. Who, who, I will? God will. I will smite the inhabitants of the city, both man and beast, and they shall die of a great pestilence. Folks, you haven't seen anything yet that's coming. Both man-made, lab-created, bioweapon and from God himself allowing it, that's going to hit America and the world. You ain't seen anything. So you're trying to scare me. No, I'm trying to bring you to reality. It shall not come nigh your dwelling if you plead the blood, if you use faith. So he says, you're going to die of this pestilence. Notice this. It actually says in, in the commentary and the understanding of what Jeremiah is saying, they literally looked at Jeremiah and were like, how unpatriotic are you? You're prophesying pestilence. You're prophesying war. You're prophesying destruction. You're prophesying calamity. You're prophesying captivity. You're prophesying Nebuchadnezzar coming in here and taking our king. You're prophesying the downfall of America. You're prophesying the fall of our economy. How unpatriotic are you? And they hated Jeremiah. That's why most Americans hate the prophetic message of warning, of judgment. Even our so-called nationalistic Christians, our patriotic Christians, they hate this message because it doesn't go along with their agenda of a takeover, of a new day dawning after the red dawn, if you will. Are you here? We're not going to have that opportunity. I said, we're not going to have that opportunity in the coming days. You'll have civil war, but you're not going to have the outcome you want. Why? Because you're fighting against God Almighty. I said, you're fighting against God Almighty and His will. His will is not for you and I to establish a new republic. It's not His will for us to get a new flag. It's not His will for us to make a new America, to make it great again, to pray again, to do whatever again. It's the will of God to fold this thing up and let the King of kings and the Lord of lords come reign and rule as the reigning ruling monarch of the universe. 
Woo! Glory to God and have his rightful place and to collect the souls in which he paid this ultimate sacrifice on the cross of Calvary for. That's the gospel message. That is what God is intending to do. And anything else, you're wasting your time. See? And I've had people castigate me. You're unpatriotic. Well, you're dumb. You're just dumb and ugly. Boy, he's mean. Well, you can be mean to me. Come on, help me, church. I'm trying to lighten up because y'all getting tight and mad and grabbing your tasers. And... You know what's true? Well, we already took an offering, so we got your money, so it don't matter now. <laughs> Somebody says, I want a refund. <laughs> Sorry, I've already been deposited. <laughs> Come on, you know it's the truth. And people say, why don't you join this movement? Why don't you get a part of this movement? I say, I'm not getting a part of that movement. I'm not getting a part of that. No, sir, thank you. I'm not going to waste my time. I would rather send a 40-foot container to Cuba, reach out to those in flood-stricken areas and tornadoes and hurricanes and help the poor and bust those that come here needing food and doing kingdom work than trying to put some idiot in the White House or idiots to do the same exact thing over and over again which is the definition of insanity and American people just back in that cycle again this is what I love about what's coming on, the, on America on the face of the earth you're not going to be able to deny this and we need this Please hear this message of the American apocalypse. We need this. We need a sovereign God to show himself strong, not just through the preachers, but through his own actions to wake us up. Because you're not listening to the preachers. You're not, you're not listening to the prophets. You're not listening to the signs and the times and the seasons around. You're ignoring the eclipse like it's some type of, you know, event to go out and look at with cheap glasses. When God literally gave us a sign of the events that are coming, and you haven't seen anything yet, and I welcome it, not what it brings, but the outcome that it gives of finally getting some people that will come into the house of God and just love God. I can't wait to the day they run to the altar. We don't have to pry you into the house of God and pull you into the house of God to promise you something. I'm not talking to this church. You guys are here. You're always here. We have more people return on a Wednesday than most mega churches do if you do it per capita. We, we've, we did the study on it. That's pretty big. Not in numbers, but in, but in the actual percentage. Because most folks don't go to a Wednesday night teaching. They just pop in for the Starbucks Sunday. Come on. Or who they can pick up for a date. Or the marriage club. Come on, somebody help me. People go to church for all the wrong reasons. But I'm looking for the day. I remember 9-11. We had a little spurt of revival where people really ran to God. And then we got comfortable again. And then everybody started buying houses. And then cars were affordable. Help me, church. No, what we're going through now, you're not going to be able to turn it around. It's not going to be a season where it just ends. This will be heretofore. I'm telling you. Get ready for it, church. I know you're listening. I know these in this house are listening, those that are connected. But there are many that are getting this link, that are watching this, that are still in the twilight zone. Don't worry. God will shake you. And afterwards, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his servants, and the people and the such are left of this city from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine until the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. <laughs> so I'm not only going to destroy them, I'm not, going to, I'm not even going to do what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn them over. Would God turn us over to our enemies? Yep. He already has. Why do you think we're invaded? You don't recognize or realize how many sleeper cells are here right now? And we're going to go mess with the serpent over there in Iran? And they're here right now? Folks, you haven't seen terrorism yet. You have not seen jihad in America yet. You haven't. 
what is coming is going to make 9-11 look like a picnic. Well, I don't believe you. They got it all under control. Joe's in control. There's a lot of things Joe is not in control of. <laughs> Are you here? <laughs> Never mind. I almost said something I'm not going to say. Into the hands of the enemies, into the hands of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword, and he shall not spare them. Neither have pity, nor have mercy. These are strong words. God wouldn't do that. He did. He did. Past tense. Historical facts. And guess what? He's going to do it again. If you don't believe it, then rip out the book of Revelation. Just rip out the book of Revelation and live your life all the way to Jude and, and just go on and be a happy Christian. In fact, just rip everything else out and live the Psalms. You and David with a harp. Just dance around. Ding, 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 ding. Are you here? And I love King David. I love the Psalms. I ain't making fun of it. I'm just telling you, that's what Christian, I live in the Psalms. We go to a Psalms church. <laughs> Pastor Melody, he'll be preaching today. No, I want Pastor Reality. I want drill sergeant pastor. I want someone that's going to help me when all hell breaks loose. When all these things begin to happen on, on the earth in a greater dimension, I want a man of God or a woman of God. I want somebody there that's got the backbone like a T-rail that isn't going to leave me, who isn't some charlatan, some witch, some warlock, some hireling, that as soon as trouble comes, he flees. But I ain't going anywhere. The only way I'll go is God says, bye, take him. Other than that, I'm here. I'm fighting the good. I'm, 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 I'm cemented. This is not easy. It's not easy, but I'm cemented. I'm going to deal with things. I'm not running to Nicaragua, to Panama. Are you here? I'm fighting, man. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith, and so are you. Watch this. i got to close. I don't want to close, but I have to. You guys are getting upset, I could tell. Verse 8, And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before thee the way of life and the way of death. Death and life are what? Are in the power of the tongue. We have chosen death in America. Look at our words. We're a nation of death. We don't choose life. We choose death. He that abideth in the city shall die by the sword and by the famine. Notice this. Man, I don't have enough time to do this. He that abides in the city. In other words, it wasn't the will of God for you to stay in the city. It wasn't the will of God for you to hide behind that flag. It wasn't the will of God for you to hide behind your nation. It wasn't the will of God for you to be patriotic in the sense that I'm going to go down with the ship type of thing and then and, and hoorah, rah, all these different, you know, uh, 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 heroic things. I want you to follow my will, and my will is to march yourself out to Nebuchadnezzar and go into captivity. Let me deal with you there, because there I'll be merciful. Here I will not be, and here Nebuchadnezzar will not be. Do you understand? And we're praying against the will of God to go into captivity, and God's saying go into captivity. But we want to stay in the city. Why? The city has provision. The city has entertainment. The city has movie theaters. The th Come on, the city has this, has luxury, has comfort, has everything I need. I want to stay here in my comfort zone. Pastor, I, don't, I want the America what I used to have. You're not going to have it. This is the American apocalypse. This is the end of the American dream. This is the end of the road in the coming days. And you must come to that understanding and follow the will of God. Do you think that's easy? Do you think I like that? I don't like that. I have children. I have young'uns that are blossoming in ideals and vision and goals and dreams, things they want to be. You do too. You have grandchildren. But we have to teach them and show them that what God has planned is greater what this earth could ever offer. Ever offer. And I can't articulate that. I don't have the ability to articulate that. Only the Holy Ghost can. 
That's what we need to be doing is praying, Holy Ghost, put an indelible mark, put an image of what the future is going to be for them with you because we can't do it. It's impossible to explain to somebody who has their whole life ahead of them that you may not have this, you may not have that. Are you with me today? And we have people in the church that can't even come to grips with it themselves. Finally, verse 9, He that abideth in the city shall die by the sword, by the famine, by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth through the Chaldeans that besiege you shall what? Live. What an oxymoron. What an absolute, upside-down, convoluted understanding to man's mindset of what he thinks God should do. Do you understand the message today? We think that we must continue this American dream. We got to have all these things. We got to have our Starbucks. We got to have all this luxury to be believers, to be a Christian, to, to be normal. And God said, that's not going to be. Finally, he says this. And his life shall be unto him for a prey. For I have set my face against this city for evil. And not for good, saith the Lord. And it shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylonian, of Babylon. Who's going to, who, who's going to give it to him? God. The king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And the touching of the house of the king of Judah say, Hear ye the word of the Lord. O house of David, thus saith the Lord, execute judgment in the morning and deliver him. That is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my fury be uh, go out like fire. In other words, do the right thing. Are we doing the right thing? No. Did we repent after the eclipse? No. I haven't seen one sign. I haven't seen one sign. Let my fury go out like fire and burn him that, uh, that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Verse 13, as I close, Behold, I am against the inhabitant of the valley and the rock of the plain, saith the Lord, which say, Who shall come down against us? Do you see the arrogancy? They went to Jeremiah the prophet. They knew he had a word from the Lord. He told them like it was. They basically said, You're unpatriotic. You're a traitor. And then they had the pious pride to stand up and say, Who could do this? They missed it. It wasn't about Nebuchadnezzar. It's not about Vladimir Putin. It's not about Kim Jong-un. It's not about any regime in the earth today. It's about opposition to God. Jehovah God. He's using these as his pawns, but it is him that has the outstretched hand. Church, we got to understand this. We got to get on God's side and say, God, I'm not going to be on the back side of that hand. Huh. I'm going to be right next to you as close as I possibly can. Finally in this, verse 14, but I will punish you according to the fruits of you. He's fair, isn't he? I will punish you according to how much punishment do you think we deserve as a country? Take a scale and put our sins down. Put a scale. And see how much trouble we are in. Saith the Lord, and I will kindle the fire in the forest thereof, and I, and it shall devour all things around about it. Honey, we're going to see fire. We're going to see nuclear fire. We're going to see fire of riots. We're going to see fire of unrest. We're going to see fire of civil disobedience, civil war. We're going to see the fire of God. I also believe we'll see the fire of Pentecost and the fire of the Holy Ghost. I believe that. I believe God saves a remnant. Those who obey and go into captivity will have the mercies of God upon us and the blessing. Oh, I have a great message of hope. I know. I have great expectation of what God's going to do for his people. But till we get there, we've got a lot of things to go through. And I don't think America is ready for the American apocalypse. But I pray that you are and in this church. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, today is the day to make it right. A lot of words today that are probably past kind of your understanding. Maybe they didn't make sense to you, but it's all right. This one thing you need to know, Jesus loves you with an amazing love, and all you have to do is call upon his name. It's that easy. You're not joining a church or an organization. You're giving your life to the Savior of the world. It's that easy. Repent. He said that I'll write your name 
in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you're backslidden and this message has affected you somehow, come on, let's get right with God. Let's find a place at the altar of our lives and let's call upon the Lord and say, Lord, do an inventory, do a heart check with me, make sure I'm right, make sure I got everything straight with you. If there's anybody in this room, those that are watching right now that need a healing or any type of breakthrough that needs a touch from God, I speak the word of faith over you now. Father, thank you so much. Bless your people. Shine your face of favor upon us all. And may the name of Jesus be glorified and prepare us, Father, for what is about to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, I love you so much. I will see you Wednesday. Be blessed.